All right, first off, there's no such thing as a wrong answer. No such thing. All right, second of all, all right, second of all, for us to get where we got to go, we kind of got to let loose a little bit. I get it. Y'all want to be social studies kids, social studies students. I get it. But that ain't going to get us where we're trying to go. All right? That's going to slow us up. So just kind of keep it real. Keep it where you are. And I think we're going to be good. All right? Third thing. This is not a rule. Just a standard. Hey, just try. Whatever happens, happens. There is no such thing as a wrong answer. So we all good. We just going to kind of get it to a move it where we want it to be. All right. Now, here we go. Now, where are we, like, in U.S. history? Right now, we just fought this thing called the Civil War. I'm sure that everybody and their mama heard about the Civil War, but I'm going to assume that, you know, y'all like me, who I ain't very smart. All right? So I'm going to just kind of give it back. Hey, the United States, the North, we was fighting the South. The South kind of had their own little thing. They were trying to figure out, like, how they could be separated from this country, and it didn't work. Because the dude who was the president at the time, Abraham Lincoln, went at him. So being that he went not have it, it's almost like, the South tried to like break away. When the South tried to break away, Abraham Lincoln tried to hold him in there. So Abraham Lincoln turned to like a crazy girlfriend. <laughs> so when the South tried to snatch away, Abraham Lincoln was like, no, no, no. I woke y'all up. Hell yeah. All right. So when the South tried to break away, it was all like, okay, it's all good, but let's just show them what we can do if we got to fight. We don't want to fight because we can't fight. But let's see if. So, when the South break away, Abraham Lincoln kind of like sit back trying to contemplate like, dang, how can I get this thing back together? But this was the wildest part. The South didn't have absolutely no intentions on putting hands on nobody. They just wanted to show that I can do this. So they go to this little spot, this little Union Fort, just so happened it's an old thing, kind of like a museum, off, off South Carolina in Charleston Harbor. They go there and they light it up. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like shoot stuff in the air. Ain't nobody there to really fight. So Abraham Lincoln hears about it. When he hear about it, then this is when things are going to get crazy. Abraham Lincoln simply tell the United States, hey man, won't y'all go down there and, hey man, stop them folks before somebody get hurt. Go on down there. So the United States Army, they come down there. So once they come down, the United States Army try to break these people up. Hey, y'all stop. Quit. Yeah, stop. So what it looked like, though, it looked like Abraham Lincoln had sent the United States Army down to try to handle up on a little small group of little dudes in South Carolina. Well, what did that look like to other places? It looked like, Abraham Lincoln, you're going to send your goons on me, huh? I thought you were down with us. I told y'all, boys, he don't care about us. So after Abraham Lincoln did this, this is going to be something big that we're going to look at after the fact. We call that the Battle of Fort Sumter. Well, when Abraham Lincoln did this and after the battle of Fort Sumter, he had little like other states to say, hey, look, that was wrong. I'm down with y'all. So once this went down, now we got like an issue. We got like a crazy issue because now some states ain't down with other states. But Abraham Lincoln looking like the, the disgruntled and disappointed dad. Like, damn, all y'all my kids, but some of y'all don't like each other. So then we get immersed in this like conflict, this conflict called the Civil War. All right, now, real quick, I want you to point them out. Don't touch nobody when you're in COVID. Point them out. Just point to somebody. Point to somebody. Point to somebody, boom. You got to have a partner. All right, cool. If you point it to somebody, all right, I'm going to have to have one of y'all physically move to get closer. All right, so y'all two, so you're going to come. All right, cool. Now, what y'all going to do is, all right, y'all going to talk to each other. The person that you point to is the only person that you can talk to. What I want to know is, what is the Civil War? Take it to another level because we can do that. So, what was the Civil War? What you got, Clark? 
I always said it was a war between the North and the South, Bit. where the North eventually won, and the cause of the war Bit. was because of the South likes to claim states' rights, but the states' rights to own slaves. Old school, dab on you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what you got, Old? Well, we was actually having a discussion, or rather a debate over here. Oh, y'all being he fancy, said, huh? Okay. He okay. Said that Okay. He was like, well, it's about the spread of slavery. I'm like, okay, but that's still about slavery. They come from Missouri guys. He got some more history that we don't know about yet. Oh. Yeah. Hey. He, he was in, you know what I mean? Like he was like in the circle. You know what I mean? Like he was in a hot bed, hot spot. All right, bet. What y'all got, ladies? We pretty much um said a combination of what you two said. Um I mentioned state rights. I didn't really know how deep state rights. Was hey man, no smart I don't know about that either. But um, but then she also mentioned that it had to do with slavery and money. Okay, cool. And it seemed like the overwhelming thing that we can come up with, like we can all agree, that it has something to do with slavery, right? <laughs> hey, well, we gonna ride with that then, all right? Now we'll take it wherever we need to take it, but it has something to do with slavery or not to do with slavery, mm -hmm. all right? Which that's the gist of it. Now. Because we covered the Civil War already, now we're going to move out of the Civil War. Now, the Civil War is going to end April 9th, 1865. It's going to end April 9th, 1865 when this dude, Robert E. Lee, is going to surrender to this cat by the name of Ulysses S. Grant, right? See, Robert E. Lee kind of like running up on Ulysses S. Grant thinking he got all his people together. Then Ulysses S. Grant shows up in Virginia in this place called Appomattox, Virginia. Once he shows up in his place, Appomattox, Virginia, the dude Robert E. Lee realized, like, I thought I was deep until I saw the them. <laughs> like, boy. So instead of taking an ass whipping, yeah, uh-huh, instead of taking an L, the dude Robert E. Lee was like, hey, bro, can I talk to you for a minute? So he kind of sat down with the dude, he listened to his grand, and was like, hey, okay, all right. Now, what do I have to do to get out of here, get my dudes out of here, get myself out of here? What do I got to do? Because, I, I, look, I ain't about to get nobody killed. What do I got to do? So the dude, Ulysses S. Grant, in very few words, told that man, well, the only way you can get out of here without getting in trouble is surrender. So Robert E. Lee, good war general. All right, Robert E. Lee, all right, hey, moment. I want you to Google something for me. Google Robert E. Lee and Appomattox Courthouse. All right? Because that was a fight that was known as the Battle of Appomattox that we don't talk about. Because it really didn't, it fell a little bit short of being like an all out brawl. It was a little bit, then realized that I ain't ready. All right? So once this went down, once this went down, all right, now the dude, Robert E. Lee, feel like I can get out of this thing scot free. I'm good. What you got? What you got? The Battle of Appetite Courthouse fought in Appetite County, Virginia, and the morning, on the morning of uh, April 9th, 1865, was the last battle of the American Civil War. There it is. So, that's the nice way to put it, but that boy Robert E. Lee didn't want to get his ass whooped, so the dude kind of like backed out of that thing, like, okay. So now, once he surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant, his guys got a chance to walk. No harm, no foul. Now that this thing is agreed to be over with, it's agreed that it's going to be over with, now the dude Abraham Lincoln on April 9, 1865, finally get a chance to celebrate and be a president of all of the states. So, you know, of course, after any kind of, like, thing go down like that, you're going to kind of want to, like, kick it, you know what I mean? You're going to have a little date night, you know what I mean? Because, you know, your boo probably sitting over there like, you never spend time with me. <laughs> you laughing too hard. So, you you're mind. like, all right, cool. <laughs> so, now you're like, okay, cool. Since I'm dealing with that, I'm through with that. So, now I'm going to go over here. Hey, all right, babe. We're going to kind of, like, you know what I mean, go on the hot date. So, you know, just so happened, it was a little, like, play coming to town. You know, my American cousin is right down the street from the crib in, in Washington, you know, right there at Fort Pitt. So, you know, but Abraham Lincoln go up in there with his boot thing. You know, they go sit up in the balcony, you know. So they get ready to do the play. Like, yo, oh, we got Abraham Lincoln up in there. I was like, hey, hey. So he's like, yeah, what up? Oh, yeah. All right. So while they were kicking it, watching the play, man, it's this dude, man, it's kind of jacked up. Because it's this dude who was like, he wasn't a southerner, but he kind of feeling him. The dude kind of like rolled up on Abraham Lincoln, you know what I'm saying? You know, it looked like the dude possibly was going to big up and like, hey, yeah, you know, just like everybody else, but nah. The dude came, shot him in the back of the head, oh. 
And when this dude shot him in the back of the head, I'll tell y'all dumb he is. The dude's gonna jump off the balcony, sprain his ankle, and try to run out. Now, who in the hell would sprain ankle to run? <laughs> so, yeah, they caught him. But let me tell you something. That man is God, Lord, Lord have mercy. That man is so lucky because this is probably one of the earliest times that that man felt like, God, I need the law. Because if the law wasn't there to guarantee that man a right to a trial by jury, them folk would have killed him over there. So the dude, John Wilkes Booth, is now going to get caught, captured, and now we ain't even worried about him because we so like broken now. Like, ah, my man Abraham Lincoln gone. So now, what are we left with? We left with a country that's newly sutured, new, newly back together. And we got to figure out how to get it going, how to get it going. So we spent like numerous years from 1865 when the war was over all the way to 1877. We spent all of that time putting the country back together in something that we're going to call the Reconstruction. All right, when we had the Reconstruction like take place, there's a lot of things that happened in Reconstruction. But the one big thing that happened in Reconstruction was we realized that we're going to put it together. It's going to take all of us. You people in the north, people in the south, yo, we just got to look at each other and let differences be differences. We just got to put it together. All right, now, point them out. Point them out. Boom. All right. What happened after the Civil War that has to do with a possible presidential assassination and putting this country back together? What happened after the Civil War that has to do with a possible presidential assassination and us putting the country back together after the war? All right, let's go. That's, that's exactly what I mean. Now, what I want to do is want to know, like, after the Civil War, somebody will assassinate you. You get what I'm saying? People happy, they're like, shit, that's messed up. That's the part. That's the part. You have trouble. Then I want to know, like, what do we do now? Like, what do we do now after he's assassinated? Yeah, we proceed to go to the trial and get the Because now he's not making it, making them enforce 
the Reconstruction Act was only lasting for about 10, 11 years. And the Reconstruction Act happened in that little period that yeah. we call the Reconstruction Act. Yeah. Okay, in that little period, the right. Reconstruction Act, that's one of the things that came about. Right. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Abraham Lincoln, was he a good guy? Was he a bad guy? What you got? I think he's a good guy. He good guy? Bad things. Okay. Uh, like when he suspended habeas corpus and told people that you don't need to know why you were I screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, See, he, my, my, my man said something, had to use the term habeas corpus, right? Habeas corpus, you know, he's smart. Mm -hmm. I'm not smart, so I had to break this down. You know, I'm not real smart. Habeas corpus is a Latin term that means right to a trial by jury. So Abraham Lincoln, he duped the whole South and said, if y'all don't play by my rules, then I'm gonna suspend habeas corpus in your state. That means that whatever happens to you, so if you go to jail 50 years for stealing a pack of bubble gum, the federal government ain't gonna come in and say, hey, no, nah, you can't do it like that. You can't do it. They're not going to come in because you lose that when you lack habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is protection for you. This fool suspended it, said, all right, y'all don't want to play by my rules, you people in the South, then I'm going to suspend habeas corpus. You know what he came in right behind him and did that? Started arresting folk, put him in jail. Guess why? Uh, you look like a Confederate guy. You got a Confederate name. Hey, you sure look like one of them chicks that was cooking for the boys. <laughs> so, because that dude just had no basis on arresting these folk, the people that were getting arrested, they could be like, hey, I got to tell somebody. He's like, uh-uh-uh-uh. You don't have nobody to tell because there's no such thing as Hades Corpus in your state. So he struck, he duped these folk. And when I say duped them, they were like, start thinking, is this really worth us staying in our state, in our status as a Confederate state of America. Is it worth it? So that's when you start trying to play these games. What you got? Couldn't that like backfire on, you know, he was freeing um, the slaves mm -hmm. in that area and then Hagen's Corpus is uh, taken away, then couldn't they just do uh, atrocities to blacks? Yeah, you're free, but now we can put you in jail for no reason. Like that could like backfire. You want to use those newly freed people to fight in the union, but they can't because now they in jail for something that you got rid of. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how unfair habeas spending the writ of habeas corpus was. How unfair because what you're saying makes hella sense. Mm -hmm. The unfair part about it is Abraham Lincoln was saying, "I'm calling all of the shots, so I can make up the rules as I go, and the damn thing you can do about it." So. If somebody was put in jail and he thought that was like wrong, you can't do that. But if somebody else do something, they get thrown in jail and they try to like whine and cry to the United States, oh, we don't hear you. We ain't got no business here. So that was habeas corpus. Now you're talking about shade big time. All right, so now, as we kind of like pushing this thing, you kind of see how like some inconsistencies were. And God forbid, it's going to take us some time to try to keep pushing this country together because you got a different opinion, 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 but we still all one group, though. We still all family. So after we go through this, like, reconstruction period, we kind of try to figure some things out. As we kind of try to figure some things out, we still figuring things out, like, to this day, 2021, still figuring it out. But there's still other stuff that's going to happen that's going to be game changers in this country. First thing, in the United States, you know, we had this idea that we kind of put the country back together, like morally, through re Reconstruction, by addressing some of this stuff. Why y'all talking about him? He ain't all that. Or, hey, who going to say something about a dude kind of like crapping on these folks? Oh, nobody ain't going to say it. Y'all forgot that. What about the black folk? Oh, ain't nobody going to talk about that. But see, we got all of those issues that's going to continuously go. But then how about this? Do you know that in this country, we start to feel like, yo, you know what? Since we are a little bit more in tune with each other in this country. So now, you know what I mean? Distance wise, I, in Georgia, I can't rock with a dude in Missouri. Because that ain't practical. That ain't realistic. Yeah, it happens. But it's not practical or realistic. 
I can't rock with some new people so that's out there in Texas and I live in North Carolina. I, it's, it's not realistic. So in the United States, we were like, yo, let's kind of like make it to where our people can have access to one another. Have access to one another, like realistically speaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to like employ these things that y'all call railroads, right? So what we're going to do, not just saying like interaction, face-to-face -face interaction. No, that's just a part of it. But whatever you got rolling over there out there in Texas, then I can enjoy it over here in Georgia. And then they can enjoy it up in North Carolina. And they can enjoy it in Indiana. And they can enjoy it in Missouri because we can kind of move things accordingly. You see what I'm saying? So the idea was to do this. We need to kind of like enact something, or let's put something out there to see if we can like physically connect this country. The idea to physically connect this country by using the railroad was a dope idea. Dope idea. Then we were like, whoop, wait a minute. Uh, how much does that stuff cost now? So then we were like, oh, psh, I ain't got no money. So being that you ain't got no money, that idea of like making the country use the railroads is just that, an idea. And we just like, yep, sounded good, but it ain't realistic. Until some crazy dude was over there on the other side of the world over in England, right? Some dude came up with a crazy idea. Now, I don't know why these folk do this, but I'm going to tell you something now. They did it, and it was like a big deal. All right? It's this dude over in England, right? The dude named Henry Besson. I don't know why he did it, but it's some science stuff. And I know we social studies or whatever, but it's some science stuff. Let me tell you what the dude did. The dude got some steel, right? He got some steel, and he, like, heated it up, and then steel turned to, like, liquid. Right? So when it turned into liquid, what's gonna happen? He gonna like infuse or blow like oxygen in it or whatever. And he noticed that when it cooled, that it was this much steel. But he started out with this much. So he like, wait a minute. Did I like make really make this steel grow? So this dude who came up with this crazy idea he made steel grow was this guy by the name of Henry Bessemer. So Henry Bessemer came up with something called the Bessemer Process. When he came up with the Bessemer Process, everybody and their mama started thinking like, well, dang, we can get some steel now. It ain't going to be that expensive because now that dude created a way to make a lot of it out of a little. So hell yeah, I'm in it. So now the United States, we were like, at first, we were like, that ain't no, they were like, whoa, wait a minute now. I think we can do this. But then in the United States, when we started to think we could do it, the federal government was really behind the push. Let me tell you how crooked the United States government is. Yes, I am. Man, the United States government was dead broke, but they were like, hey, look, I need everybody to get in on this railroad thing. So, you know, you got like two, three dollars in your pocket. You're like, all right, cool. Like, how much you going to pay the United States? The United States is like, hey, I ain't got nothing for you, player, but this is what I'm going to do for you, though. If you and you, you and your partner, if y'all put y'all money together and y'all boys invest in the railroads, shit, I'll tell you one thing I can give you. Now, you can do whatever you want to do with it, but I'm going to give you 10 miles of land as far as your, your railroad run. 10 miles. So I'm going to give you 5 miles of land that way, 5 miles of land that way, and you can do whatever the hell you want to do with the land. Now, if you're a hustler, you'll figure it out. Now, you can grow some stuff on that land. You can sell the land. Who knows? But you got the land. That's the only thing I can give you. That's the only thing that's free for me, the American government, that I got at my disposal. I can't give you no check. I can give you some land. Up. So now, everybody in their mom who's trying to make a buck, they're now trying to get involved in the railroad business. So being they're trying to get involved in the railroad business, all right, this is going to become like a major, major, major deal in this country. A major deal in this country to where if you trying to make a dollar, which that was hard to come by because we like basically still putting the country back together, you better be doing something by dealing with the railroad. I ain't talking about out there buying, laying railroad tracks. Hell no, that's hard work, man. What you better be doing, you better be doing something like I got me a little uh a little lemonade stand by where they working at, so I sell them some lemonade, Jack, while you work. Or, shoot, somebody like me, hey, man, look, I know y'all boy working on the railroad, but it's Friday, and I know Coke can cut some house, so, shoot, hey, Coke, we'll set up a little, uh, little barbershop stand down here, and we're going to cut these cats up on Friday because they're going to want to get loose on Saturday. All right? So you got to be doing something pertaining to a dealing with the railroads. But because so many people dump their whole, like, being 
into doing something with the railroad, it's going to slick give us a commonality. Slick give us a commonality. Now, I don't have a difference with you because we all trying to do the same thing. It's kind of help mend this country and put it together literally with railroads. Question. So, a couple things. While Coach um, has been going through this, and remember, this is um, our model lesson. So as professionals, it's some things that I want to make sure we stop and look at, OK? So on the form that you have now, because I do want to respect your time, I know we said 30 minutes. Um, I know we could sit here and do this all day because it's so engaging. Uh, but what I want you to look at is the first thing you're supposed to do is the standard. So his standard is where? Where is his standard? Yes. So let's go ahead and put that in there. If you need to move around, move around, feel free. Now, Coach did a couple things. I don't know if you um, noticed because it was done seamlessly, but what did he do to pull people back on track if he felt they might not be on track? What did he do? Yes. Um, when you were on his phone, so there's a search up exactly what he was talking about. I just read it out to everybody. Did he embarrass the student? No. You didn't even notice it happened, right? You just no. simply asked him to just look up what you were talking about. Yeah, now, move, now moving might not have been doing anything wrong, but he did see a student was on his phone. So instead of me making it a big federal case, let me just use that to my advantage. So the student on the phone, look up something for me. And guess what that student did? Looked it right up and was able to respond to the question. So that was a, a redirection that happened. The other thing we talked about with checks for understanding. How did, Coach, because this was still lecture heavy, right? Still lecture heavy. Did we do some checks for understanding? Yes. Tell me evidence of that. How did he yeah. check? The parallelism. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What else? The back and forth conversation, the discussion. Academic discussion. What else? What about high order questioning? Did he question you guys? The guided questions. The guided questions. Okay, so some of those things are also checks for understanding. So when we are working with the students, and right now everybody should be filling out this form for us, but when we are working with our students, there are ways for us to gauge what they know, stop and check, and not just necessarily talk the entire time, and we don't find out to the exit ticket what they know. So while you are filling that out, what is your feedback from Coach? And I'm asking you to do several things at once, but it's because I want to get you to your lunch. What is, what's some feedback, positive? Yeah, y'all helped me. Very yeah. engaging. Um, he was able to make it relatable. Um, it took more than that. It's, it was personal. It was cool. I mean, I wouldn't have been here doing that. Right. <laughs> what else? What's some more feedback? Um, I know statistics for my students, like a lot of the things that you were doing is what I try to tend to do with my students. And, you know, I, it's like, dang, I'm speaking so much. So that's, that's think, parent share is really, really good to kind of stop and get them to think. But I also think at some points I was like kind of going in and out of what you were saying because it's, I, it's a lot of information hits you right. a lot. Right. And it's just, you do, even as a student, me sitting here, I, you do go in and out. So right. uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to slow down so the students can really comprehend what I'm saying. Even with the think, parent, share, you can still flow in and out. So, so my thing would be, and this is just from where you're going as a student, and again, I always tell people social studies is not my thing, but what could the students have been doing as he was lecturing that would have kept them going along with them? With him, what could they have been doing? They could have had guided notes in front of them. Maybe some guided notes in front of them, but they had to fill it in or stop mm -hmm. and explain and write, mm -hmm. so they would know kind of a chronology of where we're going. And there's some expected questions that you'll be that you will be answering, um, and that might keep them there and give them some um, evidence. What else? Okay. Also, I'm sorry. I just thought. No, 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 no. Um, actually having like photos of people talking about or just right. events or something because you were saying a bunch of different names and I was like, I don't know, I'm not going to remember those names or I'm not going to remember right. dates. <laughs> I know this sounds bad for you all, but I really was like linking 
with what you did last standard right. to yes, this yes. standard. Right. This is where this one started right here. You know what I mean? Right. So I didn't show you any mathematics for Yeah, because we already we did that last week. You know what I mean? Right. Last week. So you know we're kind of building on. But yeah, I totally get that. And I'm big with you on that. You know what I mean? I want to see something. Yes. Yeah. 